Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. We are joined with Harley Schlanger from the Roosh Foundation, and uh, I think Alex is all over this. Uh, we had an excellent interview yesterday with Joel Skousen on Hour 3. We want to connect the dots between the uh, Boston, uh, it should be called Strangler, the Boston bombing that was done uh, literally as an attack against liberty, against uh, trying to, to imply that right wings extremists are actually the ones responsible for this. And now the ricin thing, this is a textbook, government-sponsored, uh, self-inflicted wounds like 9-11 Oklahoma City. Having been the uh, Oklahoma City Special Law Forensic Team Examiner for all five special t- uh, teams that came back, um, when my boss, Major Swinder, was gone doing airtime in, in Fort Hood, Texas. Uh, and after they found out that he spilled the beans, that they removed two U.S. Army Corps near Engineer Micronukes, Thermate, RDX, and High Explosive Cord, I got... Fired in death threats on the spot, and I countered that I didn't get a five-figure check, a letter of reference, and if they came within 500 miles of me and my family, there were various individuals I was facing face-to-face that I told them that we were going to be dead. Now, I'm particularly pissed that this kind of crap is still happening in America, and I can tell you Alex is doing a fantastic job. And the people that have sent information to Alex and also sent to me directly, this is not speculation. This is a government op. And now it connects to all the other genocidal crap that's going on that Harley's going to now expand upon dramatically because the banking collapse, we don't get Glass-Steagall, this uh, bombing is going to be a minor blip on the screen in terms of the millions that are going to die. It's also when you have trade wars and currency wars and all the other things that are tied to Glass-Steagall and speculative banking, we will have billions die. And even the release of the bioweapon H7N9, which has been all the characters I studied it. This is another avian flu bioweapon that's released, and even the Chinese uh, scientists, and I don't think they're lying on this, it replicates eight times faster and mutates, indicates that we are into a very ugly phase of the transition from a proxy war, a, a currency war, and a financial war into a hot war that can go nuclear any day or hour because the financial backing behind it, which is Glass-Steagall and ripping down the current financial system, is a prelude to a full force World War III. And uh, Harley, I'm going to hand it over to you now because I think we need to connect the dots. This was a government op. And, uh, and, and we have there literally, we have the five photos from different angles with their pants down and both cheeks of their ass are showing on this one. The government did it. There's no doubt at all. Well, let me give some context and background to it because, you know, a lot of times people. Uh, think that when you say something like that, you're jumping to conclusions, and they don't oh, no, no, realize they don't realize that it comes out of a context where you can not only connect the dots, but you can actually oh, it, operate it was, from a higher yeah. level. Which well, is they were a, even doing uh, they were even doing uh, drills. It's been all over the place. I mean, uh, Alex and his team have done a fantastic job. But I have my own contacts for independently uh, that have also told me the exact same thing. Uh, and uh, they've caught them, and the people that have sent the information in, by the way, to Alex's team and to me, uh, have confirmed that this is a complete government op, and it's so obvious. It's just really, the thing is, what's really bad about this is they have so dis- much disrespect for the public now, even when it looks sloppy, they don't care. They don't care that it's not even a good lie. They don't care that they have guys walking around like military special ops, and that they have a drill team going on, drilling, doing a drill with sniffer dogs everywhere, and then they actually make it go live. I mean, this is what happened well, in the you know, bombing, you have 9-11, start... oh, everything. In fact, even Oklahoma City was a government operation run not only by CIA, but FBI and ATF. And I got fired and death threats as a result. So I'm particularly angry over this. You have to start with the question of who benefits from an operation like this. You know, how would this improve recruitment to al-Qaeda or to right-wing terrorists or yeah, any right. of the usual suspects. And why now, why this particular location? And I think there are two things that, that I would point to before I go into the broader picture. One is that this happened on Patriot's Day. This happened yeah, on yeah. the day that commemorates the beginning of the American War of Independence against the British. Yeah, and I exactly. think people should keep that in mind as a, a first point. Then, Which as is a an second, insult to our, to our literally our, our, our day of, of, of literally 
of independence where the shot heard around the world now is a bomb heard around the world with America locking down. So every sports event you go to, you're going to see a man with a blue glove and an anatomically abnormally long index finger ready to do a cavity search and put you through a body scanner before you can go into your event and buy your popcorn, your hot dog, and your beer. This well, is let's how just hope that as in get. the first shot heard around the world, that this is a wake-up call for Americans. Now, the second thing that I would say you have to look at is that this is occurring at a moment where the Obama mystique has disappeared, where Obama wow. is under attack by his opponents and by his allies, where it's becoming increasingly clear that what you and I have been talking about for years that Obama is a puppet of financial interests that are out to destroy a huge section of the human population. And by that I mean carry out policies that will starve people, that will make them susceptible to, to new diseases and plagues, that will, with war and civil war and chaos, this is what Obama's mission has been. And what's happened in recent weeks is that because of his direct attack on the policies that got us out of the last depression. For example, he's now calling for privatizing the Tennessee Valley Authority. He's destroyed what's left of the space program, destroyed the fusion energy program of the, the, the official program of the government. He's now attacking seniors. He's destroying the medical profession. Oh, under Obamacare and the sequestration, Money to fund cancer clinics for the poor people, the poorer people who don't have insurance and can't afford treatment for cancer, that's been ended. So what's becoming clear is that Obama has taken the gloves off, the mask off, whatever you want to call it. You can now see his Hitler mustache. And even people who had been apologizing for Obama up to last month are now coming out saying, my God, this guy is a monster. We had this, and you'll appreciate this, Bill, at the California Democratic Convention. People who in the past said, well, LaRouche, I agree with him, but you have that poster of Obama with a Hitler mustache. I can't go along with that. At the yeah, Democratic exactly. Convention last weekend, people came up to us saying, you want to impeach Obama? Good. Let's do it. Now, this is a tectonic shift in the California Democratic well, Party. Well, when you get somebody that's a narcissistic a Satanist like Obama, and he's a willing puppet, by the way. He's not just a puppet. He's a willing satanic puppet. You now have a, a caged animal that's now cornered. This is not a good situation. And that's, well, why and that's exactly this, what I'm this, saying. This, when this you symptom look at the is context, very, very bad. This is a symptom that he's willing to do virtually anything. If you're going to take a major event like this where people are running to demonstrate their love of life and their fitness and all the other things, what a great thing in America, and they blow their legs off and kill three people and injure 170. No, this is an obscenity, and we need to that's why, cancer out of that's our That's why I'm saying when you look at the context, what you see is growing desperation on behalf of the bankers to impose their fascist austerity policies. They're now openly stealing depositors' money in Cyprus. They're preparing to do that in Germany, France, Italy, and the United States. Well, look what they're doing. They're, they're looking at doing with gold. Their uh, naked shorts just last week when they dropped the gold, $79, was 500 tons uh, of gold. And this week, they dropped it Monday, just the first day, $149 plus. And that means that uh, they're, they're doing naked shirt buying and selling of gold to a level that has never been seen before. Which means well, and they're, they're doing willing this to do because anything to prop up the phony stock market yeah. and the phony uh, currency controls. Yeah, and this is a moment of desperation on their part. Exactly. And so, don't be surprised by anything that comes down. Yeah, in other words, this is not the end of the uh, beginning. This is the beginning of the end. It's going to get a lot nastier now that you've seen this behavior.
come back and uh, Harley, I want you to run with this now. Now that we've made the apostrophe at the beginning of the statement, uh, this is not really open to people's uh, vicious ignorance to pretend that this isn't happening. If the government's willing to do this, if they're willing to put Obamacare, which is genocide, if they're willing to arm al nursa al-Qaeda, in fact, there are even elements within the so-called Syrian Free Army that are freaked out that al-Qaeda is taking, making public statements, public statements, and of course they're the mortal enemies of Israel as well, and we're arming literally people that we were potentially shooting at and probably have shot at, at uh, graduated from being our enemy in Af- Afghanistan and Iraq. Yet Obama and NATO are arming these maniacs and literally guaranteeing that eventually once they decide to finally turn their weapons not on Syria but against Israel, Israel will nuke them. And so we're talking about a almost certain Middle Eastern war that is going to get real hot real soon unless we remove Obama, impeach him, and we put Glass-Steagall in to control the financial issues because the underlying fire is driven by the oxygen of an under control financial system, which Glass-Steagall and the LaRouche Foundation is the, one of the only organizations that have been talking about real solutions to this infrastructure and real credit that will fix the problem. And if we don't do this, it's game over. We're talking about billions dead caused by this, and the financial issues always fuel a hot, bloody war. Well, and that's exactly what people have to look at, that the, we're, we're in a situation now where the wiggle room is gone. The idea that bailouts would work, which is what we've been told, uh, we're told, I, I, I can tell you, since I've been back in the U.S., I've talked to some top people uh, at banks and also in the Federal Reserve, and what they're saying is, look, the U.S. situation is now stabilized. And I said, yeah, stabilize the way a corpse is stabilized before you put it in the ground. The, the economy is not stable. The real unemployment is out of control. But most importantly, the physical production that's required to sustain a population is being shut down. And that's, the, that's where you have to look for the problem. Now, what they believe is that they bought time with the bailouts. They can't continue to do bailouts because the anger against bailouts, uh, where the government gives money to banks while they cut spending on health care, on transportation, on uh, food inspection, things of that sort, there's a, a growing rage against that. So they came up with this idea in Europe, which we call quantitative stealing where they go in and they say, well, you must be rich because you have 100,000 euros in the bank, so we're going to take 60% of that. It's so demonic. It's almost like they they must add ask one of the minions of Satan himself for the new terminology called bailing in. And I love your terminology that LaRouche came up with, which is, you know, quantitative stealing. Uh, This is so obvious. They don't even have the respect or think that we're not just as dumb as nails or rocks. How well, you know, Mario, Mario Draghi, the head of the European Central Bank, who came out of Goldman Sachs, who has been working for the British since 1992, when he was a participant on the Yacht Britannica when they planned out the destabilization of the Italian government, which led to the series of crises that brought us to 2013, Draghi said, well, look, the Cyprus thing was a mistake. Now, the reason he's saying it was a mistake is because their plans went public before they were, had prepared the way for it. So now he's saying what we need is a, a structural mechanism in the EU and a regulatory mechanism. And the structural mechanism I call the s and But what he's saying is they need to be able to have a uniform procedure to resolve bankrupt banks. Now, here's the trick, though. They're not going to resolve the bad debt of the two big to fail banks because those are the banks that own Draghi. They're planning now to shut down the what are called in Germany the Sparkasse, the savings banks. They're going to shut down the small regional and local banks. And in Germany, these small regional and local banks, while they only have about eight percent of the total assets, do about sixty percent of the loans to car dealers, to shopkeepers, to farmers, to construction companies. So in other words, they're going to use a single supervisory mechanism to shut down the banks that finance production that are relatively liquid. Yeah, this was exactly what happened in 1929. This is, my grandfather told me this when I was 14, which is many years ago, 40 plus years ago, 
that this is exactly what the big uh, mega international satanic supra banks did to all the little mom and pop banks like credit unions everywhere that created credit that actually created a actual capitalistic economy. They want to move now to a central controlled collapsed credit, completely destroyed economy where everybody literally puts out their hand at, like uh, David Copperfield and says, may I have some more gruel, sir? To the well, state. Because That's these where it's going. banks actually have real liquidity because exactly. they've been funding real production. Right, and they're also not leveraged on these crazy investments exactly. which are, in a and sense, so gambling with our money. They're going to take the money out of these banks and use them to bail out the big banks. So what Draghi oh said is, gee, we jumped the gun by just stealing everybody's money for bailouts. Let's, in the short term, use the smaller banks. Now, I've been in touch with people in the League of Savings and in some of the U.S. smaller banks and discussing this with them. All of them can see it, but they say, well, but we don't have the power to do something about it. And I said, sure you do, Glass-Steagall. Now, here's something interesting. In Indiana this week, a uh, farmer who is a, uh, uh, actually he's a National Farmers Union guy, went to our conference in Washington two weeks ago. And he got back, and he contacted all the National Farmers Union chapters in Indiana and said, we've got to get Glass-Steagall through the Indiana legislature to demand that the Indiana congressmen support it. And within 48 hours, he had mobilized so that it was a unanimous vote in the Indiana State House on Monday to support Glass-Steagall. Now, that's just sort of a model. Then in Minnesota, there was a, a banker who was a small banker who had a farmer come in to visit him saying, look, we need Glass-Steagall. And the guy said, well, you're preaching to the choir. And he said, no, I'm not preaching to the choir. I'm yelling at the choir because you guys aren't singing. Right. And he put the guy under so much pressure that that banker today is going around with farmers and others in Minnesota to try and get a Glass-Steagall resolution through the Minnesota legislature. Yeah, now if they don't get these legislations uh, if they don't get it through all these states, what's going to happen is exactly what my grandfather said. All the little banks, they're going to call on the credit notes and bail in the big banks because they're not going to do any of the other garbage. And that means credit will disappear from the middle class and businesses. And then you're going to see business choke off. We're going to see not just food stamps, food lines that will be around the block and down and into the next state. And people don't understand. They, the reason why they're saying that they may be, quote, martial laws, because if they do this bail and then close the little banks, we'll see a level of starvation with a population that's not used to victory gardens like after World War One. It's going to happen where, very quickly, because yeah, you're it'll right, happen people within don't have days. connections to the farms. Right. Back then, I remember my grandmother said that, and everybody had a victory garden, that 75% of the population had a garden and ate food out of their own garden. 75% of the population, now it's less than 1%. And if this happens, we're going to have desperate people doing desperate things. Not good. And you can say Obama and his bunch of minions from hell are totally responsible. And Harley, you need to run with it some more because we have lots of ugly issues to deal with here. And, you know, as a former uh, surgeon, trauma doctor, uh, emergency EMT uh, kind of person that worked in really ugly situations, I've seen a lot of horror. Uh, this situation there is, is an example of some of the ugliest, nastiest things for government to promulgate a terror act against their own citizens and kill people, cut their legs off after a long race, injure people permanently and maim them as a pretext to bring in a police state with TSA and Homeland Security getting massive multi-billion dollar expansions in the face of cuts to everything else, including Social Security and health care, and killing people by denying chemotherapy to people that are arriving at facilities and said, sorry, no chemo for you today. And I don't agree with full-dose chemo, but you have a, at least some chance of at least partially surviving if you even get bad you know, conventional medicine. But to just tell people, sorry, we're turning you away because we got sequestration. 
You have a nice day. We're going to expand Homeland Security. We're going to have TSA with, with blue gloves everywhere and body scanner machines, and we're going to turn the entire United States into like an airport security zone where you can't go to a shopping center, you can't go to a public event because there'll be a micro-nuclear. Like, remember, people who listened to a Super Bowl Steve several years ago. I think they're going to keep upping the ante. And the next ante, by the way, is going to be a nuke. It's not going to be just a chemical weapon or a uh, pressure cooker bomb. It'll be that. It'll also be something with a, uh, the flare of a bioweapon like H7N9 that what they're trying to say is a spontaneously recombinant virus. We know damn well they're lying, lying. This is a bioweapon, just like we have now all, virtually every nation on Earth <coughs> signed these treaties to hand over to the United Nations, their military, and the World Health Organization, their health care. So the government literally de facto, if you have an airborne plague, takes over every nation instantly. Uh, so I expect they're, this is, they're going to out the ante, and it's tied directly to the financial situation. The financial game is up. They can't even make money with the derivatives market anymore because of the multiples. And as a result, they've decided to bail in, which means they're going to collapse all credit. That's like 1929 all over again, only this time it'll be a lot uglier. This is going to make the Lombardy collapse of the 14th century that caused the Black Death this is going to make the 1929 collapse look like a garden party among preschoolers. This is going to get really, really ugly. Well, it's already underway, and that's what, what people have to realize, that if you read these reports coming out of Greece, you find out that doctors are saying they can't take care of patients anymore, that you've got spread of, as, as you know, if you can't keep a hospital clean, uh, doing surgery in a dirty hospital is the equivalent of, of, well, uh, of and we killing have, people. And, and we also have the degradation of the immune system. Most people don't realize two years of radionuclides accumulating in the population of the Northern Hemisphere, now it's in every ocean on the planet because of ocean currents, you're going to get a degradation of the herd immunity, and it's perfect grounds for a worldwide plague. We are st standing on the edge of a precipice right over an open maw of a volcano of hell. Financial and hell... And this is intentional. Is, I, I want to come oh back yeah. to this question intentional. we had Absolutely. earlier about who benefits, because the, the, uh, the policy is one that has been implemented step by step since the late 60s using the cover story that we are there are too many people there's not enough resources but they're now no longer relying on the cover story they're basically saying that we can't afford to feed all these people you have obama now even cutting back on a program that was eisenhower's program and then john kennedy's the food for peace program what they're saying is that, well, we shouldn't provide food anymore to these other countries. They have to develop their internal markets. Now, meanwhile, we've destroyed their internal markets by destroying their currency. One of the reasons that they are taking gold from Cyprus is so that Cyprus cannot go back to their old pound. You know, Cyprus used to have uh, what, right, what was they, called they the pound. They, they've actually only been in the EU for about four years. So the fact they're doing this is trying to make sure that although half the population are involved in one way or another in the financial markets, they want to decimate it. They don't want it to resurrect. They want to make sure it's destroyed. They also want to make sure that investors anywhere know there's no place to hide. We're going well, to now get they're, saying, they're, they're now saying of Cyprus that its economy will contract by 10 to 15%. Now, you remember with Greece... Oh, come on. How about 90%? Well, that's, that's the point. But remember, with Greece, they kept saying that the austerity will cause it to have, go towards slow growth. And year after huh. year, it was officially 8 to 10 percent drop, 5 to 8 to 10. Now, the, the fact is these figures they're using are fraudulent anyway, because they still count right. derivative profits as part of a GDP, when all it's doing is actually adding more debt. But this is the fraud now of the economists. And what we're seeing is the final phase. LaRouche wrote a, a, an article years ago where he talked about the killers in the six-piece suit with the attache, attache case, the yes. so-called economists of the Club of Rome and these groups. And now we're seeing that these groups, the systems analysis model, the McNamara model, that's what's now being used to destroy populations. And, and that's why uh, a terror bombing is actually relatively small 
compared to the numbers of people being killed by these policies. But it plays the role of convincing people that you can't beat these guys and you have to succumb to a police state if you want to survive. Yeah, that's not true at all. In fact, it's the exact opposite. That's why I like the LaRouche Foundation approach, which is you need to create a Hamiltonian credit system, you need to wall off and speculate a banking by these international bankers. And the international, these large multi-banks like Bank of America keep on getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And they keep on being bigger to fail, and now they want to consume all the small banks, which means there'll be no credit at all. And their policy, we are the Bank of England, we are the FDIC, is you when you put your money in the bank, you're now a bank investor, and they can just bail it in and take it all. And they, they, don't they want say some. it's an unsecured investor. Yeah, unsecured. <laughs> so that, I mean, that, this, that is like, that, this, this is like... Yeah, a, forget any protection. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's beyond mind-boggling. It's so gut-wrenchingly evil. They're, they're, they're not even hiding it anymore, which tells you that the killing fields are about to start. This is not like, a, oh, gee, you're such speculators. Why do you, you people really need to be on meds? You know what I want to do? I want to take someone like that and strangle them. I am so sick and tired of people that think that we have enough guts to tell the truth and ask the right questions. I have no ability to tolerate people like that. I would literally like to vomit on their boots. I just can't well, but that's stand why, the idea that's that That's why Glass-Steagall works, because you don't have to strangle them or vomit on them. You can actually no, I, bankrupt them. Yeah, right. What you do is simply, I'm talking about the people that allow this to happen in our population, that think that we're nuts, that why should yeah. we not just be sad about what happened in Boston rather than angry at the government for doing it? Of course I'm sad. I'm a trauma doctor. I cry when I see babies uh, traumatized by their parents if they're abusive and their arms dislocated and their spine broken or the neck broken and they're paralyzed. I'm angry when I see somebody shot with a gun and then the, the Yakuza shows up and blasts away and tells them, if you don't get out of the trauma room, we're going to kill you too, Doc. I'm angry when I hear this kind of stuff, but I'm particularly angry by the ones that are supposed to protect our liberty, our rights, and our safety, the government, and they're the biggest murderers in history. Well, and, and they have a, an intention to do it. You see, it would be one thing if you say, well, maybe they tried an experiment and it didn't work. They've been on yeah. a 40-year experiment which has made things worse and worse and worse. At a certain point, you have to realize this is not an experiment. Yeah, this is experiment. not stupidity, by intention. the way. This is not stupidity. This is a agenda. And what people need but to this do is, is why, and say, Dr. Dio, this is why it's so important that people realize that the trial at Nuremberg of the war criminals, of the Nazis, actually provided a legal precedent for how to deal with these people. You hang them yes. for committing genocide. And exactly. that's what and it's I done believe that to... it, it, needs be, it needs to be done in public, uh, with cameras all around the world, with a public execution. Well, this is what was done to Hitler's doctors. And the people who devised Obamacare used as their model the Hitler doctor useless eaters policy. Yeah, well, it. this is going to be uh, the next step up, I believe, is an airborne plague and a nuke at a major event. And they want you to be very afraid. Don't come out of your house. Don't go to a shopping center. Don't go to a public event like the Super Bowl because you might die in a nuclear flash. Welcome back, and uh, Hardy, we were speculating about the uh, about an interesting thing that I want to expand upon. I've just recently been watching this. Uh, human beings have a capacity to adapt, and if you actually look at human beings, we're the ultimate predator. But the ultimate predator among predators is a super class of human beings, and you'll see them in the royals, you'll see them among the billionaires. And if you actually profile these people, you find them a high level of bipolarity. Many of them are manic, but you also see much of them are have either what we used to call multiple personalities or uh, dissociative identity disorder. So you'll see extreme athletes, pilots, surgeons, CEOs of corporations that are literally in some ways, uh, at least some of their alters or personalities, they're superhuman. They can do things, calculate things, play musical instruments, do sport activities that's well beyond the range of normal humanity. On the other hand, there are other alters and personalities that are completely devoid of any aspect of humanity and compassion. And we see this in leaders like Adolf Hitler, who was a genius. We see this among people like Obama, who presents himself as probably the best late-night TV host that's ever been uh, uh, in the modern world, 
who now well, is our president. One thing that's clear on Obama is no empathy. Even no, when he a personality said he's trying there. to go out of his way. I mean, I, I look back, I remember yeah. Ronald Reagan's speech when Challenger blew up. I don't know if you remember that, but it was, yes. it was a very moving statement on behalf of the nation to those not only who had sacrificed their lives, but to the rest of us saying, we're going we're gonna to carry on their mission. When Obama talks, whether it's about Newtown, whether it's about the Gabby Giffords shooting, whatever it is, you can tell it's calculated that he's trying to appear to show sympathy when, in fact, there's no sympathy there. Same thing with the uh, Hurricane Sandy. So what you have is a cold, heartless, self-promoting neurotype who yeah, was yeah, chosen well, precisely because he's willing to kill without a second thought. Well, well, if you actually look at his genealogy, you'll see he's related to the royals. If you look at royal families, you look at the leading CEOs of corporations, you wonder why is there such a web? Even people like Brad Pitt, you see this guy, he's a chameleon. These people are able to assume and adapt sub-personalities to do superhuman things, whether it's acting, surgery, managing corporations, uh, and you'll see a very high level of this, uh, this form of what they used to call multiple personality disorders, and some of them are aware of each other. But many of these personalities are completely devoid, just like the reptilian brain part of your brain, they're completely devoid of humanity. And Obama demonstrates that. He's a narcissistic uh, maniac on the one hand, but he could sell ice cubes to Eskimos. The man really is the ultimate politician. Despite the fact that even you have to respect him, even if you hate his guts. See, I'm not even sure about that. I I think that he was sold so heavily by the media that he didn't even true, have they, to be the but, ultimate politician. Well, but the thing is, he was sold heavily by the media, but he had to continue to be able to present at least a face. In other words, people that want to see beyond the one millimeter thick uh, veneer of what he is, they can see the lack of humanity and see the the lying uh, piece of garbage that he is. There's a lot of Democrats, a lot of people now that are finally kind of getting so disgusted. Even their, 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 their mirage of who Obama is is disappearing, and they're reviled. They're going like, well, what are we seeing here, man? This guy, that's how why did we, you know how did we end up with this guy? How do we this get, came up how do we the other day. Someone yeah. said, was, was talking with one of my associates in California, and they said, yeah, but obviously there's been a change in Obama. And we said, no, no. You, just, you just didn't uh, want to admit uh, that he was what we said he was. And, and people right. are, yeah. you know, people, when we went out and put a Hitler mustache on Obama, yeah. the, the initial reaction from Democrats was complete rage and hysteria. Oh, but yeah. from Republicans, it was cowardice. They were saying, you can't do that. You're, you seem extreme. We don't want to be discredited. And we yeah, said right. to them, but this guy has Hitler's policies. Even you know, Sarah Palin brought up the death panels. But she and others backed away from the characterization of Obama as a killer. And that was a huge mistake, because oh, had yeah. they done that right, we could have stopped Obamacare and saved saved lives and saved billions of dollars of wasted money and destruction well, look, look, of the health care industry. Look, look, look what he's doing with the missile defense system. I took care of people working on the missile defense back in the mid-90s, 19 years ago. And they needed a number of years and a lot of trillions of dollars in order to develop it so we have true protection, which is three levels. A, you know, the strike at the launch phase, the uh, space-based chemical weapons and particle beam lasers on, large, on 767s and space-based weapon platforms, and the Tesla-style interferometry weapons to create a plasma explosion in space to disable these weapons, including their chaff and other uh, systems to actually prevent you from identifying what's waste and what's the actual nuclear warhead that's multiply being targeted. The fact is Obama has not only grounded that program, but he's also turned off just two months ago the uh, Southern Air Defense Command, which means our blimps and our other systems for stopping cruise missiles or low-altitude nuclear bombs coming in from the Guatemalan Mexican border or from Venezuela, which I know from my sources that the Russians and the Chinese have built there, that we are in dire straits because we are seeing selectively Obama dissemble parts of our, our defense, including bringing trucking across the Mexican border where they just don't need to fly it in. They can bring it on a truck from Mexico and there's not using proper radiation detectors or opening up the seals in all these containers. You don't get a suitcase nuke. You get a big damn nuke inside a container. You drive it into the center of a large city like Atlanta or Los Angeles, and it's game over. And there's and Napolitano is the biggest idiot out there, and she'll say that they're doing this and that, and they're checking every device. I'm a nuclear expert. I can tell you Napolitano and Homeland Security are doing crap. 
There's no protection from an airborne plague, no protection from a micro nuke, no protection from a suitcase nuke or a large container size nuke. We have no protection. And all this stuff of taking your shoes off in the airport, walking through a terror scanner, and doing body cavity searches is crap. If you're a Muslim and you want to kill someone, you're going to have it inserted through your umbilicus, intra-abdominal cavity, or under your breasts if you're a woman, and you're going to walk in and blow yourself to pieces and kill a lot of people in an airplane. So this idea well, the, the that whole gonna... point, But the whole point to a lot of this is psychological warfare. Because sure they, they the want to convince point. people that you should be happy if you're still alive and walking the streets. And exactly. therefore you shouldn't protest, you should accept what's happening to your children, what's happening to your parents and grandparents. Yeah. You should accept the fact that the money that you think you have is not yours, that if you still have a house you should be thankful. And the idea is to convince people that there's nothing you can do to fight. And what right. I want to just finish this program by saying, because look, right. there's a lot of, of negative things that people are thinking. The positive is that if we mobilize, we can beat these guys. We have 5%. the law on our side. We have yeah. the Constitution on our side. We have the majority of the population on our side, but they're still hiding. And we've got to smoke them out of hiding. And the reason I said this thing about Republicans being cowards is that Obama could never have done any of these things without the Republicans putting up an impotent and very phony opposition. Right, or rhino opposition, Republican name only. Uh, it's ridiculous. And there's a lot of Democrats, by the way, are starting to get reviled by this. They're not happy. There's a lot of, and, and that's why I see Obama and his administration from hell, their globalists, as a wounded beast. I don't see them as a rising empire. I see them as a wounded beast, and a wounded beast is much more dangerous. That's well, why but the other thing is this. they're also dangerous to themselves. Obama's Nero syndrome makes it possible that at some morning he may wake up and just kill himself. Well, no, here's an example Nero of, did. this is an example of how it could tie to North Korea. North Korea basically say, I'm mad as hell, I'm hungry, I bomb you. They're not capable of bombing anybody, okay? Even if they can put something in orbit, we can take it out with space based weapons, etc. And we can know, see right through the side of these satellites to see if it's carrying cobalt 60 or whatever. So, all the fools out there that think that, they, that North Korea can do anything, they're idiots. What North Korea is saying is, and what this guy who's trained in Switzerland, he said, My people are hungry. If I protest enough, you'll feed them. That's what's going on. What they need to do is they need to make a deal to say, we're going to bring in international inspectors, we're going to feed your people, and we're going to allow your country to reunify. We need to assemble your nuclear weapons. And they need to tell China to collaborate, because China, this is their bad dog on a short chain. China's in dire straits, too, because if North Korea does something stupid, or even stupider, if Obama declares that he's going to start firing preemptively on North Korea, we're going to be at a war with China and Russia immediately. Well, We're the Chinese have are saying that they'll do what what's necessary to stop this. The well, problem the is, is Obama. They, they the let, problem is no, no, well, apparently it's, it's their problem too because the Chinese have been being duplicitous as games was along. They realize now their little battle game of Sensu is an end game that's stupid. So the Chinese now are freaked out by what they've been playing this game of letting North Korea do this and supporting them. But now they're starting to change their policy, and unfortunately, with a wounded beast like Obama and his bunch of maniacs, they may actually do a preemptive strike in North Korea and start a nuclear war. And right now, they're already proliferating weapons, and the warfare is now regional in the Middle East. They're bombing and fighting in Lebanon. This is going to spread, and, it's, and in fact, it's more dangerous in the Middle East than it is in North Korea. North Korea could be neutralized pretty quick. Yeah, the Middle East, exactly. it's a different deal. Saudi Arabia has nukes, Iran has nukes, and Syria probably has nukes too. So the idea that you're going to just stop this war and not cause Israel to use the Samson option, uh-uh. Israel is 10,000 times, in the Middle East, 10,000 times more dangerous than North Korea. North Korea, they're just hungry. They just want to have a car that drives, a pen that writes, a decent meal, and a home that keeps them warm. 